Hi, Assalamu alaikum, namaste, sastriya kal. My name is Raheem Khan and you're watching The Aziza Show. Uh, last week we had a chance to talk to some really great youth about uh, their voice uh, and in particular the magazine My Voice. This week I'm really excited to share, uh, to have a conversation with someone who I believe is very inspiring. Uh, her name's Farhana Kabir. Thank you, Farhana, for being here. Thank you for inviting yeah, so Farhana, this, this particular episode is all about kind of like taking vision to reality. And I think when I thought of that, I was thinking, you know, who best to talk to than to someone like yourself, who I've had the chance to meet, I've had a chance to hear your story, and I think it's quite remarkable. So tell us, what, uh, tell us who you are. What do you do? My name is Farhana Kabir, and I own um, two companies. They're all dedicated to women, so it's for Deserve Via Realty and Financial Corporation. Mm -hmm. And it's for women, by women, because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. And I started in 2013. Okay, and what was your, tell us, like, the, tell us where you grew up, what your, like, you know, what your story was, and then we'll kind of talk about your organization more. Um, I think it's all led to my organization, wherever I grew up. I grew up in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with seven sisters, six sisters other than me, and uh, two brothers, so nine members, siblings, and I, my mom was widowed for in very, I was very young when my father died, mm -hmm. but I grew up with a very, very inspiring and beautiful woman around me. My mom was very, my believer in doing whatever I do I, in our culture, you know, that women in arts doing businesses that time, like 20 years ago. So I thought she actually encouraged me from my 16 years old, uh, saying that whatever I wanted to do, she inspired me. For her first time when I, when I was 16, I wanted to do my clothing company. She actually gave her last, you know, Eid, when you have a Eid al Adha, we have a sari, so she had $2,000 left, and she actually gave me that to create my first company. Mm -hmm. I didn't know much of um, marketing or something, but I broke even. A couple of years down the road, I came here, and I started in Montreal in fashion designing. And I think it was not knowing what is entrepreneurship? I just wanted to do, be a fashion designer, mm -hmm. I guess. That led me to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, and education about, entire education about what is entrepreneurship right. in this country. So, and that led me to create my, being a broke real estate agent, yeah. I made my broker owner, first lady, who inspired me. I'm very fortunate to have women <laughs> around me. Very, uh, she was the first woman who owned Remax and, mm -hmm. um, she actually encouraged me to become a real estate agent. Mm. And she gave me, she actually catered to me as like I'm her daughter. So she actually gave me a lot of education about real estate. I had no idea what real estate was. Yeah, I don't, so I was going to ask you, how did you <laughs> move from like fashion design to real so estate? When I came to, from Montreal to here after one and a half year, I, I went to work in Square One. Mm. And then my sisters and we went to Royal Page, one of the a seminar to become a real estate agent. I didn't know what was it. And then a financial advisor, I been there. So I was doing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, but my heart told me to go real estate because I met my mentor and she seems very inspiring. And she was like literally kidding to me as a like her child. So I said, okay, I'll do that. And that was the first test of uh, real estate. And I asked her, I want, she said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to open a fashion designing company. And she said, Actually, Fahana, just do a real estate. It's the least expensive way to make money. You're on your own, but uh, you have the umbrella of a great company mm -hmm. and will support you in every single way. Then you understand how to do the business. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can make your money and you can open whatever you want when you have a financial uh, abundance. Mm -hmm. So eventually, I understood what she's saying. And I actually had to, when she died 2012, I actually got to thank her for what she contributed in my life. Mm. So it's, I'm really fortunate in that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you came to, you said you came to Montreal to do fashion designing. Right. What was that process like for you to get here? Um, what made wasn't you decide a, to come to Canada? Oh, it's my mother because I, my brother actually brought my mom here to mm -hmm. see how it is, the country. And my mom, because we were younger, me and my youngest sister, mm -hmm. underage, so we came with her. Okay. Not knowing what it is because it just <laughs> mom is coming or coming at the same time. Mm. I wouldn't say it was bad because compared to what 
we, I was in restricted world, I believe. Mm -hmm. Coming here is a lot more freedom. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm focused on doing the things that I want to do, because my focus, my entire focus was I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know the word entrepreneur at that time. I just know that I wanted to have something, a freedom, not working for anyone. Because truly, my father said when I was young that uh, if you work for someone, you like really don't have any freedom. And then when I was 12, my brother-in-law said, Oh, he was a business owner too. So they were, and my uh, brothers too. They were very inspiring to me, but I didn't see any woman doing mm -hmm. that. Because literally, back home we have it, what? You get education, doctor, engineer. If you don't want to become them, then what do you do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're out of luck. Uh, you get married, you have children. Uh, I don't think that was my option for yeah. me. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm very fortunate to, for mom, mom to believe it in me. Believe in you, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So what... Um, you know, so now you run this organization, you run this, this, this realty business, right? Um, and you only hire women, is that correct? I wouldn't say only, <laughs> because it's actually um, to our uh, board, which is our RICO, Real Estate Council of Ontario, okay. or anything, it's um, against the law to say only hire women. Okay. But I prefer women, and mm -hmm. the reason behind it, I would say that after doing business for eight years, I opened two of the other companies. I mm -hmm. had paid advance company and real estate company. Mm -hmm. uh, Red Carpet is the high end of home life with two other partners. In 2012, I had to let them go because I don't think it was me. I didn't want a traditional company. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking something is meet, missing. Mm -hmm. When I'm creating something, something is missing. Okay. And then I, let, I actually told them to s give my initial deposit. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't want any, any profit, nothing. I have something to do. I just don't know what. But in 2013, when I, one day I got this name, Deservia, and I, I really like breakfast. Mm. So I thought I would make all over, like uh, around the world, breakfast in Brampton. Mm. That's where I'm living right now. And then I said, no, I, I will start a real estate company, a mortgage company. Because when I was in the real estate industry, I see 95% are male. Mm. And in mortgage too, to this day actually, there are not many CEOs. Uh, broker owners of real estate companies. Yeah, so I thought, mm -hmm. why not doing that? Mm -hmm. Educating women. It is the least expensive way to start your business. You have an umbrella, you just have to learn and then keep doing and serving your client, just like my mentor said. So I thought, why not doing that? Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit of um, hiccup though, because for me, I see lots of women, they will be willing, to, they, they have such a good potential, but they will be willing to work as an admin instead of being the forefront and then mm -hmm. make more money. Mm -hmm. So after two and a half years later, I get like seven agents right now. Mm -hmm. uh, actually more like four years, two and a half years later, I start getting women and they're like, why all women? I said, why not all women? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I believe if a mom flows in a, uh, in a house, if she flows physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially, and mm -hmm. spiritually, then children grow um, that way too. Right. There's the no restriction. Is more than, right. Yeah, then so will the children be. Or if she's, more, if she's free to, to inspire them and support them. Correct, correct. And it supports the kids, yeah. Yeah, so I thought, okay, why not women? Getting this woman 50 50, get 50 50 market share in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all male driven, and women are more nurturing very nurturing they don't really i wouldn't say man doesn't either but they do care about the transaction mm -hmm. very few but when i work with women they only care about the per people mm -hmm. and they're in the transaction it's not about the money it's not about they just want to say that if they can assist or empower those buyers or sellers or whoever business owners to mm -hmm. make more out of their a transaction instead of just looking for one commission or something. Right. So I'm very privileged to work with beautiful women and they're nurturing, it taught me a lot, mm. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and how long has it been since you've been doing this? Um, I've been in this industry for uh, 13 years, okay. a little bit more than 13 years, but I am, as a broker, I've been for four years okay. now and this real estate company mm. and mortgage company because we do also mortgages. Mm. Um, we see the best of the both world. Right. Without mortgage, there is no real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so we thought we'd give that to the women. And I actually got a lot of support from women too, saying that it's not easy to go into the bank and asking the mortgages because it's still a, 
little bit backwardness in there. Mm -hmm. So when they deal with us, it's a lot better, mm -hmm. a lot more comforting. Mm -hmm. They can do it right. type of. I'm just curious. Well, well, we're gonna take a quick break mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about, you know, I'd like to know like what the experience of the women has, have, has been, like what your experience has been. Like, there's, there's so much more to talk about. So yeah. we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to the Aziza Show. This is Farheen Khan, and with me is Farhana Kabir, uh, CEO of Deservia um, Realty and Financial Corporation. So uh, we were just talking about your story, and um, you know, I mean, I think the fact that um, you know, Farhana, you've come here, um, you know, uh, you you grew up with a single mom, you came here. She worked really hard to get you to and continue to kind of motivate you, right, right. to fulfill your dreams. And here right. you are, you're running your own. You're a mortgage, uh, you know, you're a broker or an owner, uh, and uh, you're employing all these uh, wonderful women. So, what does that, how do you manage day to day? What keeps you motivated to keep going? Actually, first thing first, I do actually, um, I actually do meditate every morning, okay. or you can call it a prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, that keeps me going because it gives me a lot of. Um, balance in life mm -hmm. so and then I start doing that and I actually go with my day because first begins with me and then others then I see uh, most of the time like administrative they're all women as mm -hmm. you say that I actually employ all the women because mm -hmm. I'd like to give them I wouldn't say employee they're actually freelancer mm -hmm. because they will be then be actually against my belief that it's an entrepreneurship is not there so I actually train them and let them know that they could be an entrepreneur and invoice me every month to mm -hmm. do whatever they do, mm -hmm. but I'm very fortunate to meet quite a lot of beautiful women that make my life easier. Right. Yeah. Um, so I actually do that in the morning to, to motivate myself. I was always motivated because I really want to do what I do right now. So to me, it's like, a, it's fun. It's not something that I work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I have to do it. And it takes time to build anything. Nothing happens in one day. It took me like 12 years to build what I wanted to do. Right. It wasn't, as I was making money in real estate, it wasn't about the money anymore because money without the purpose is actually nothing at the end of the day. So when I realized that I'm, my, my dedication is for women because what I benefited from being an entrepreneur is like not working on somebody's schedule. Mm -hmm. I can be artistic or liberated or free creating anything I want and nobody's to tell me how good or bad I am because at the end of the day my results say so what I am, right. you know what I mean? Right. Um, uh, and then I was, I'm not even driven by money. I'm driven by what other I can support or right. give that to other women. Yeah, and the impact. Yeah. yeah, the impact. And then, you know, sometimes it's not, they're not even looking for money. They're looking for somebody to that ignite that passion or mm -hmm. hold their hands or mm -hmm. say, you know, you can do it, mm -hmm. right? I, I did have it. I had to, f I'm very fortunate. I found my mother. I'm, I was born in her and my sisters are always supportive and my brothers. At the same time, when I found my mentor, it was good. Like mm -hmm. she was there, she was tough cookie. Right. But it's just, she was there for me and I love like the toughness of it. And then eventually I know, but now I know that actually it's more catering to them, mm -hmm. to empower them. It's not easy doing any, anything. Mm -hmm. Even working for someone, I don't think it's easy. No, not at all. But I always say if you work for yourself, at least give yourself a three years because it takes 10,000 hours or three years dedicatedly put in a company mm -hmm. and then people get to know who you are. Mm -hmm. It took me four years. People now know that there's a company exists that is all women. Mm -hmm. And this year I'm actually promoting. All my goal was to establish the base, which is the, I didn't want it to have a brick and mortar store or company where I, I can go out there and be with women, entrepreneurs, different companies. Mm -hmm. They're ruled by women and they're owned by women. Right. Like I, I breathe and inhale and I can wake up yes. to see beautiful women. Right. And what motivates me also knowing that I can pick up a phone and call a person and they're not like another woman and say, okay, what do you need? You know what I mean? Right. Uh, it's like a community of- Yeah, it's like a sisterhood. Beautiful woman coming together <laughs> and then we can say, listen, I need this and right. I don't have to worry about like what, what is going to be the impact, the sexism right. or um, any other things, just but nurturing and caring, right. true compassion. That's great. Yes. And what advice would you give to women that, you know, are, are looking to, um, 
pursue their dreams, whatever they may be? Actually, when I come, I get the women. I do actually mentor a lot of women. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say find an entrepreneur you're in your, uh, sorry, a mentor, uh, especially the CEOs. They have plenty of time, I think, mm -hmm. on top of it. They love, it's not about plenty of time, they love mentoring others right. <laughs> because we have empty of, uh, like we want to do that because we want to see that same passion, what I, my mentor saw in me, right. in others. So that right. gives us the, you know, the, the fun or whatever the day to day right. uh, inspiration. So if you are reaching out to those type of entrepreneur, like, for example, Farheen is doing right now the show. Mm -hmm. If somebody is assisting them, mentor, like being in an assistant position or helping them, just not to look for to the money because experience is tremendous. Yes. Um, and then do volunteer or apprenticeship. And eventually, if that's your calling, mm -hmm. be a part of it. But don't deny that experience because I worked in a clothing company for when I was coming from Montreal and I worked for six months free mm -hmm. and I, to this day I didn't get paid but it didn't matter because I learned how to do a nice. business you know nice. I did everything for the gentleman so I didn't mind it and when my mentor said you can get the money back I said it's okay not to worry the experience was tremendous right. value was absolutely out of the world right. so if uh, I were there again I would reach out to I, I was fortunate but I would reach out to a mentor like that, different company, call them. There's right. nothing that, say, if they say no, that's fine, but call them out and say, I am trying to do this, can I help you out? Mm -hmm. Or can I be in um, off health do with anything that you need? Mm -hmm. So that way you get to find out in a company what you like, what is your passion. Uh, to be honest with you, I didn't know my passion was real estate. I, I always wanted to be a uh, designer, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> an entrepreneur right. per se, but um, I, I just thought that maybe God guide us in a different way, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If mm -hmm. we listen to our spirit, we go there. Eventually, I get to love it yes. for the sake of women. So reach out to other women, so reach out to help them because there's nothing like helping another sister grow somewhere, then right. in return, you don't know. They might hire you, they are looking for CEOs to next one to yeah. replace them, you know what I mean? Right. So just now, or right now, I'm looking for another person to replace me so that I can do some other stuff and get mm. more stuff. And it is, I wouldn't say challenging, it's like you have to find that person mm -hmm. that who can actually do that mm -hmm. in return on me. Okay, great. Right. And can you tell us, like, what, was the, what would you say was like, the biggest challenge you've had in your life so far, and how did you overcome it? I would say biggest challenge would be not knowing mm -hmm. what I was here to do in okay. the purpose of life. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and the also the whatever I was going through is in you know you, know, you see a lot of male driven industry mm -hmm. and I was in specifically one even though I, I'm in the tomboyish world but you know um, I was thinking that there is not much nurturing and mentoring and people operating from very lack. It's not that they wanted to reach out to another person when I was um, doing my business and growing in business. Um, people are looking for like a, just a temporary right now. And not, not enough support, I would say, but right now, like from 2013, especially for women, mm -hmm. it just shift was tremendous. It was a perfect timing for me to open the company too. Mm -hmm. it, there, before it wasn't. It was always, like if I go somewhere, they will always ask me, am I the administrative assistant? Mm -hmm. uh, never a CEO, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it was not there. Now you go there and you know another person can appreciate that, saying, no, you have it. They will make a mistake, but it's okay, you know what I mean? So it wasn't women were not accepted in a many different position. Mm -hmm. I know I do have it in a bank still, they have that stigma, but we have to actually transform that in a better way right. so that, you know, for women to get loan, they, they are able to do that, do the business. Right. I think a lot of banks as like BDC and everything, they're actually helping uh, uh, changing the structure because mm -hmm. of women, there's a lot of women coming out. Okay. Um, so I think I miss that, the support of mm. women. Right now, you have, we have so many tremendous, beautiful women, uh, entrepreneurs and CEOs, but that time I didn't. I just have one or two, like I really have to right. seek for it. You have to look for it. Yeah, yeah the, the answer or the education about what do I wanted to do. And as an entrepreneur, what, how do I go about it? Mm. It's not a cutthroat, we can't do it. Like mm. as a woman, I don't think we, were, we grew up in a world where we cutthroat and it's business is business, you right, know what I mean? Right. It's more like a, um, 
a creation, like when you create a food or a, right. a child. So it's just like that. Right. So I wasn't around many of them. Now I see a lot more they're coming out. So mm -hmm. that was a challenge, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's all good, I think. It, it taught me a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. So what, um, I know you and I have had conversations about this like really huge vision you have in the right. long run. What, can you share that with us? Yeah, I always wanted to do, like, uh, my goal is to, actually, mission is in life, I think, 180 million women transform their lives. Amazing. I don't know how, but I always believe in God, and I think it's, when the time is right, it will happen. Mm -hmm. But I think it's already happening. It's, it's already slowly, happening. Slowly, yeah. slowly, all the sisters are coming out, all the, right. all the women are coming out and supporting each other. So I'm, I'm in a happy place, I yeah. think. That's my well, it's remarkable how you know much you can like influence somebody's life just um, you know by doing something very simple, right? True. And like you're employing a lot, you know a bunch of these women, and who knows where they end up, you know, after you as well, and you know how many lives they touch too. So I think uh, you know, already it's already happening. Yeah, <laughs> we made like that too, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. uh, you were an inspiration too. I talk about you all the time. Tru truly, oh, truly. Sweet. Uh, your story is like remarkable, and I'm glad that I met you. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, I think that you know when I talk about my story as well, it's just it's honestly it's just about trying to inspire other people to share their stories, right? True. We all go through struggles. You know, we all have to go through difficult times, and right. you know, we we do our best to to try to remain resilient, right? Right, right. In my case, it was just you know for me it was like well how do I keep going? You know, supporting my family and you know, trying to make a difference in the community and, and all of those pieces were really important to me. And you're right, the, the thing about the purpose in life, like that's so important. It's like, I'm so grateful that I had the chance to figure out what exactly I was meant to do, you know? Okay. And that's that's basically what I continue now, but it's just like every day my, my intention is to, like yours, is to be able to make impact in people's lives, right? Yeah. It's not about the money anymore. It's no. about trying to just make a difference, excuse me, a difference. And I yeah. find personally that when I when I have that intention, then like, you know, God takes care of me too, right? It's, True. It's it's not about that. I don't have to worry. You know? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And good to be in that place, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not to say we haven't been through difficult times, right? Absolutely. We've been through our struggles as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, question for you. Last, like, you know, few few seconds. What, um, if you can share maybe some advice that you have, you know, any sort of last words to to the women that are watching the show. What would you tell them about wanting to fulfill their dreams? I would say keep your score good. It's very important um, to create a business. Most of the time, you have five things you have to do. Use other people's knowledge. Use other people's um, income, just like you would be using a content and a mechanic to uh, create your, uh, like a, take care of your car. So I would say use other people's knowledge. Why do you have to work hard? Work effortlessly so use other people knowledge other people money in a sense like when you have your credit good then you can have a line of credit and you can establish your business mm -hmm. and there's a lot more way the very simplistic way you can actually do the businesses right now and government has so much support right now going on so reach out to that find out that what you wanted to do reach out to mentors or any entrepreneurs female that you like or male it doesn't matter uh, you like their um, position what the business is all about then you just go from there Ask them if I can be of help to you or be a support to you and go from there. It'll come. Perfect. Well, thank you for being on thank the you. show, Farhana. And, um, you know, hopefully you'll continue to, to make the impact that you are. Um, so to our viewers, thank you for watching. Um, you know, as Farhana said, like you can make your, your vision into a reality. It's just a matter of finding the right mentors and the supports uh, that you need. Um, sometimes it's difficult. We all go through hard times, but, you know, we can certainly be resilient uh, and uh, make the most of our lives and, and try to make impact. Until next week, take care. See you.